Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the healthy fats. In particular, we're going to look at the monounsaturated fats today. And we've been spending a lot of time talking about these red fats over here, the saturated and trans, which when you get too much of them will cause health problems. And we have spent little time up to this point talking about the healthy side. Well, we're going to change that around today and learn what you need to know about monounsaturated fats, where you find them, and how to best incorporate them into your daily diets. So let's begin today's discussion. We'll begin by asking the question, what are monounsaturated fats? And from a chemical standpoint, a monounsaturated fats are simply fats that have a double bonded unsaturated carbon in the molecule. And, un and monounsaturated fats are typically found liquid at room temperature, okay? But if you put them in the refrigerator and chill them for a little bit, they actually will become a little more solid. So how do monounsaturated fats affect your health? Monounsaturated fats can have a beneficial effect on your health. When eaten in moderation, just like anything, whether they're healthy or unhealthy, moderation is the key. These fats can help reduce your bad cholesterol levels in your blood, which will lower your risk of heart diseases and strokes. They will also provide nutrients to help better develop and maintain your body's cells. And what a lot of people don't realize is a, lo a lot of... Uh, vegetable oils, in particular olive oil and canola oils and, and those healthier oils are going to typically be much higher in vitamin E, which is an antioxidant vitamin that we all need a lot more of. So that's just another reason why it's important to consume these fats. Are monounsaturated fats better for me than saturated or trans? And if you've been following along with these lessons, you know the answer to that question is an absolute yes. These fats, mono and polys, can have a positive effect on your health when eaten in moderation and whenever you start choosing more foods higher in these fats and less foods that are higher in the saturated and trans. And just so you know, Okay, monounsaturated fats can have a huge amount of effect on, uh, on your bad LDL cholesterol levels. In fact, they can significantly drop them when you eat more foods higher in these fats than, than the foods that are higher in saturated and trans. And they are also known to help improve your HDL levels. Now, if you notice the different sizes and arrows there, the bigger red means that it does have a much more powerful effect on LDL cholesterol levels in, in terms of lowering them and it is known to cause a small rise in some people in terms of their HDL cholesterol levels. Okay, the result equals a significantly reduced risk in heart disease and strokes and all that other nastiness that you want to try to help prevent. Are monounsaturated fats lower in calories? And once again, you should know the answer to that question is absolutely. It does not matter if the fat that you eat is saturated, trans, poly, mono. If, the, if it's uh, uh, omega-6, omega-3 polyunsaturated fat, all fats, regardless of their health benefits, will contain 9 calories per gram, which is why it's important to limit all fats okay, and eat them in moderation like anything else. So how much monounsaturated fat should I eat? And touching on that same question. And the answer to that is you should eat no more or try to not to consume more than 30% of your total calories from any kind of fat, regardless if it's healthy or unhealthy. Um, you should try to limit it to 30%. And then obviously, it's important to try to consume the majority of those calories, all right, the majority of that 30% from mono and polyunsaturated fats. Okay, but most of us consume, or at least before you started this program, you are likely consuming more saturated and trans fats than you were mono and polys. So which foods then contain mono and saturated fats? And that's probably the biggest question today is if your goal is to get these fats into your body, then where do they come from? And these are the best sources and also some good sources that I'd like to take a look at here. So when you're trying to get these fats in, Great sources or good sources are going to be canola oil, pecans, peanuts, and any nut butter, whether it's peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter. You know, any, any form of nut butter is going to be a high source of monounsaturated fats. Your ultimate sources are going to be olive oil, macadamia nuts, almonds, avocados, hazelnuts, pistachios, and cashews. These have the highest percentages of monounsaturated fats found within each serving of these. And then I'm going to also bring up two kings here, olive oil and almonds, because these two foods are the kind of foods that I like to see 
in your daily diets on most days. So like we mentioned before, you want to try to use olive oil whenever you cook with it, stir, stir frying. And uh, anytime you have the opportunity to use olive oil, you should. And then we've talked about it a lot, especially at the beginning of the program, where a healthy snack should consist of a nut. And one nut that is just extraordinarily powerful in terms of health benefits is almonds. Remember, it is a superfood because not only does it have lots of monounsaturated fats, but it's great for fiber and vitamin E and protein and all those things. So I, I put those two there with the crown because I believe these two foods should be found in your daily diets on most days. So um, I want to see you snacking on almonds on most days, and I want to see you using olive oil. So how do you know how much monounsaturated fat is in a product? And this is the tricky part because not all food labels are going to list monounsaturated fats. In fact, if I had to put a percentage on it, I would say 99% of food labels don't have mono and polyunsaturated fats listed on them. Okay, and it's not required by law, so they don't include those. So in order to guesstimate how much unsaturated fat that a product may contain, you're going to need to do a little math and know which foods are high in the healthy fats. And that last slide showed you some of those food products. So let's take a look here. All right, let's pretend that we're going to look at a tablespoon of peanut butter. And this is the food label for that serving of peanut butter. And then the ingredients list. So as you note over here inside of the nutrition facts panel, the total fat, the saturated fat, and the trans fats are listed. Nowhere do you see mono and polyunsaturated fats. So what you can do is simply subtract away how many grams of saturated fat and trans fat that you see from the total fat. So for example, you would subtract 3 grams from the total of 16 grams of total fat, and then you know that there must be 13 grams of other fat there, and the other fat has to be either mono or polyunsaturated fats. So how do you know which ones may be there, the mono or polys? Well, you have to take a look over at the ingredients list and look for those ingredients that are high in those healthy fats. And you can see peanuts is the number one ingredient, and I just showed you that peanuts are an awesome source of monounsaturated fats. Also in this list, you'll see that there's canola oil and there's even flax oil there. So you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself to um, safely assume that there are a, there's a very large percentage of fat in term, coming from the monounsaturated fats in this product and very little coming from the unhealthy or saturated and trans. Okay, so that's what you have to do because you're not going to find that on the label. And then if we look at this chart again that I've been showing you now since we started this, we're going to pay attention to the monounsaturated fat side. These are likely found in the vegetable oils, avocados, and olives, and then all the different nuts and seeds, in particular the almonds, macadamia, uh, pistachios, the peanut, peanut butters are all going to be the ones highest in monounsaturated fats. The effect in health is going to be, again, reducing the bad cholesterol levels, and this is in turn going to obviously lower your risk for heart disease. And then your daily limit limit is no more than 30% of your total calories. Remember, the majority of your 30% should come from the mono and polys, but still you should limit that total fat to less than 30% of your total calories. So that was a pretty good run through as far as what you need to know from the mono and saturated fat side. These are pretty straightforward and easy to understand. However, we're now going to next take a step into the polyunsaturated world where you can see where down here you don't have a green colored omega-6 where the omega-3 is green colored. And you hear so many good things about omega-3s. And very little do most people know about the omega-6s. So we're going to spend the next two weeks talking a lot more about these and the importance of making sure that you meet your body's requirements when it comes to these things. And I think you're going to find this information very cool, very powerful, and we're about to change another aspect of your daily diets with the understanding of this. Okay, so I'll see you guys again next time. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.